Hi, I'm back here again in Surfpaw's back office, and in this video, I'm going to go over some of the more common reports that Swiftpaws users might like to run, and in particular, the reports which are going to be most useful to new users of the software. I'm going to cover reports from a range of different subjects. These will be product reports, sales reports, inventory reports, discount and surcharge reports, and account and member reports. I'm going to start with product reports. So I've navigated to products and reports. And then in the reports screen, we have the products menu. And here there are three reports, which I've found to be the most commonly useful reports for new users. And those are the discontinued products report, price list with stock on hand, and the unused PLU numbers report. The discontinued products report is useful if we want to create new products uh, new lines of products, but we're not quite sure if they exist somewhere in the database already. If perhaps they existed at a previous time and were discontinued, we wouldn't want to make a duplicate of that product when we have an existing one that we can use. There are no filters here that you need to worry about too much unless you want to filter a specific group of product. But in this instance, I'm just going to preview it with the default filters. And as you can see, there's only one product on the report, the orange juice. So if you're adding some new product lines, you might like to run this report first to see if it already exists somewhere in your database. The next report that you might like to run is the price list with stock on hand report. Again, you can adjust these filters as needed, but I'm going to leave them as the default and preview this. And here we can see various information about the products we have in our database, including the group, the description, the size, whether or not it's active, and other information like the stock on hand and the sell price. Keep in mind that this sell price is the first price level, as you can see here at the top of the report. Any other price levels are not shown on this report. However, if we do want to run this report uh, and see a different sell price, we can do that as well. If I close this report, I can choose from the price level filter to look at, for example, my bottle shop price level. And now we have the bottle shop price level selected with the various sell prices here. This report is useful if, for example, at the end of the year or the start of a new year, you want to go over your product list and consider increasing your product prices by a certain amount. You can print this report off and take it around the venue while making note of the new prices that you want to set these items to. And the last product report which I find is very commonly used is the unused PLU numbers report. This is quite often used when creating new products or product ranges when you need to find a vacant PLU range which you can slot that new product range into. So in this report you might like to choose an existing PLU range, so if for example 1000 to 2000, and we'll preview that. And all of the PLUs that exist in that range, which are not currently used, will be displayed. So you can print this off and cross each PLU off as you create new products. And you can also use this report to find PLU ranges which are in order if you're creating product lines such as keg beers which have uh, a keg, pint, midi, jug, and possibly a glass size, uh, which you want to set all in the same PLU range in order. Okay, so the next category of reports that I want to look at is in sales reports. And in the sales reports, the most commonly used reports which I've used is the group sales by location report, the PLU sales by location report, and the special sales report. Of course, all of the different reports shown here do have their uses. However, I find that for new users, these three reports are sufficient to show the most relevant information to them. So starting with the group sales by location report, I don't have any sales in my database to report on, uh, but these reports are fairly self-explanatory. The group sales by location report is going to show you over a given period, whether that period is yesterday or last week, the volume of sales of each product group and the combined value of those sales. 
You might like to use the filters to filter out just an individual location, for example, the restaurant. And you might like to filter out just a specific group of product, such as your tap beers. Or if I reset these filters, you might also like to use master groups, which is going to give you a report showing the value of sales for all of your master groups. So that's groups like food, beverage, and sundries, whatever you happen to have set up. It's a very useful report to get an overall view of the value of sales that you've done over a given period. The next report, which I find is used quite often by new users, is the PLU sales total or PLU sales by location report. This report gives you a lot of different filters. The first one you'll need to set is your time period. So for example, you might be interested in sales all last month of a particular PLU. You can also set your date filters to a custom value. So for example, the 15th of last month to the 15th of this month. You can then filter out a group, a category, or even just a single PLU to be covered in your report. Again, you can use master groups if you choose to, or you can untick that filter to use regular product groups. This report is useful if, for example, you have new products and you want to track how they've been selling over the last couple of days. If it's, say, a new menu item, you might like to run this report on your mains meal product group. And the next report is the specials sales report, which allows you to report on sales of items which are on special. So that might be a mix and match or some kind of uh, weekly or daily promotion. Again, you can set your date filters however you choose. And you can also filter out a specific mix and match rule, a specific group or category, or a specific promotion. The promotions include both your happy hours as well as ongoing weekly promotions. And reporting on those will give you an idea of how popular those particular promotions have been. The next category of report that we'll look at is sales audit. And these are most commonly used to report on discounts, surcharges, credit sales, cleared sales, and canceled sales. And you can use these to analyze or justify why a particular volume of discounts have been done, and also to narrow down exactly where the bulk of those discount sales have been attributed, whether they might be uh, staff discounts or member discounts or any other kind of discount that you've been using. So the cancelled sale audit is quite simple. You can set your date range and that will report on all of the sales which have been rung up at the pause and then cancelled without being cashed off. This will be useful for understanding clerk errors at the pause as well as any unusual behaviour. The cleared sales audit report is very similar. We'll show you the same thing except with cleared items instead of cancelled sales. The discount sales audit report is again quite useful. You can filter out just a specific discount, whether it's a mix and match or a predefined discount, and you can report on that over time to work out the total volume and value of discounts being processed to help you determine if all of those discounts are valid and to make sure that those discounts aren't being abused by staff or used incorrectly. And the last one here that you might like to take a look at is the wastage audit by reason report. If you are using wastage as a function on the keyboard, as well as using reason codes, you might like to take a look at this perhaps once a month to analyze the volume of stock and the value of stock which has been processed as wastage. And based on that information, you might like to take steps to cut down on the amount of wastage that's being processed. If, for example, you have an unusually high amount of wastage being processed. The next category of report that we'll take a look at is going to be inventory. And up here in inventory, we have a range of different reports which will show different kinds of information. The status by location report with master groups enabled will show you a breakdown of all of your different products, their last sold date, and the number of items on hand. You can see that most of these are zero. And if you use minimum and maximum stock on hand values, then you'll see those as well. 
The value by location report will show you the total value of stock in each location. At the moment, I don't have a whole lot of stock in my database, so there's not much to see. But typically, you would see a breakdown across all of the different stock holding locations, as well as the total value of all of that stock. One other report that you might find useful, particularly if you're trying to track down issues with a specific product, is the movements audit report, which you can use to isolate a specific product. Let's say this one. And you can set a date range. And this report will show you all of the different movements that have taken place with that product over that date range. So this will include stock takes, transfers, adjustments, invoices, as well as sales. So if there is some kind of large variance that concerns you, uh, you can use this report to track down where all of the different stock has moved to and from to help narrow down your issue. You can also use this report to track down a specific kind of movement in movement type. You might like to choose just sales or just stock take or perhaps just adjustments. And the next category of reports that we'll take a look at is accounts, where if you are using accounts, you might like to track the amount that's being used on each account or provide a tax invoice to that account holder. We can track account activity using the account activity detail report, and you can filter out just a specific account or an entire classification of accounts. So for example, staff accounts. This will show you a breakdown of all the different transactions involving the accounts which you have set filters for. So you can see the total value and the frequency of transactions over time. You may also like to use the tax invoice report to generate a statement for a particular account. You can filter out a specific account here. And then generate a statement from that, which you can then print or email to your customer. And the last reports that we'll take a look at is the member reports. There are a few different reports in here which we might like to take a look at, such as the abbreviated member list, which will show you all of the members that exist in your database. At the moment, I've just got the one. You might like to look at member activity by running the member activity summary report across a range of different members to show you who's been active and who's been inactive and possibly the inactive members, you can target promotions towards those members. And the last report that we'll take a look at is member points value. This is quite important because it will show the value of points which are out in the wild, which members could redeem if they chose to do so. From an accounting perspective, this is a liability and needs to be treated as such. The member points value report will show you the total value of that liability broken down across different classifications. Okay, so that's an overview of some of the more common reports that you might like to run in SwiftPos back office. Of course, there are many different reports in the software, and depending on your needs, you might like to use any one of them. However, if there's something in particular that you're looking for and can't find, go ahead and leave a comment, and I'll try to find the report that's most relevant to you. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.